happy to see you all here today, and I'm really, really sad to be here today. Um, say these names with me. Amadou Diallo. Amadou Diallo. Billy Joe Johnson Jr. Billy Joe Johnson Jr. Oscar Grant. Oscar Grant. Carolyn Adams. Carolyn Adams. Anthony Baez. Anthony Baez. Sean Bell. Sean Bell. Richard Brown. Richard Brown. Patrick Dorisman. Patrick Dorisman. Johnny Gamage. Johnny Gamage. Gary Hopkins. Gary Hopkins. Nathaniel Jones. Nathaniel Jones. Taisha Miller. Taisha Miller. Cornell Young. Cornell Young. Tamir Rice. Tamir Rice. Robert Tolan Jr. Robert Tolan Jr. Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Michael Brown. Michael Brown. And as you know, that's just a tiny, tiny proportion of all the young black men and black girls brown men, brown girls that are killed in this country by law enforcement. To Leslie right. McSpadden, Michael Brown's mother, and Michael Brown Sr., his father, we send our deepest condolences and our outrage and the shame we feel about this decision. The historian and author Isabel Wilkerson tells us that the rate of police killings of black Americans is nearly the same as the rate of lynchings in the early 20th century. Wow. That is, according to the FBI, between 2005 and 2012, every three to four days an African American has been killed in this country by a white police officer. And Vanessa said every 28 hours, I think that's a more accurate statistic. This is an underreporting by the FBI. Not only are these numbers considered to be underreported and underestimated, they don't include the numbers of young black men imprisoned at astronomical and disproportionate rates in this country. They don't include all the black men sitting on death row and who have been executed in the 32 states that employ the death penalty. I don't need to tell you these facts, but I will because we need to hear them over and over and again. over again. Black people are three times more likely than white people to be killed when they, when they encounter police in this country. And black teenagers are far likelier to be killed by police than white teenagers. And Latino teenagers are also killed by law enforcement at rates far higher than you white youths. The concentration of these police-inflicted deaths among young black and Latino men is in part because they live in neighborhoods that are most likely to be under heavy police surveillance. They're far more likely to encounter police, to be arrested, and to be killed by police than white youth. Black parents across this country that prides itself on democracy and freedom, so much so that we use our murderous military might, economic sanctions and manipulations, and political superpowerdom in countries around the world that are populated with brown folks in the Middle East throughout Central and South America, all over the continent of Africa, to bring them democracy. But I digress. Black parents across this country of so-called freedom and democracy have to teach their children how to keep themselves safe from the people we're told are in our communities to protect us. But how can kids of color ever be safe in a society that relates to them as enemies of war? If you think I'm exaggerating, look at the news articles from the last two years. Our local police departments all over the country are being supplied with surplus war gear from the U.S. wars on Iraq and Afghanistan. Police officers are now soldiers in domestic wars on communities of color in our cities across the United States. And despite all this, as black and Latino youth are killed by cops, we continue to be told, oh, these, are, these things just happen. They're tragic mistakes that occur in the ordinary course of police work. They're the cost of keeping our streets safe, or it's a matter of officer safety. And I say bullshit. That's right. yes. <laughs> Michael Brown's lifeless and bleeding body lay for more than four hours in a Ferguson street after he was shot. This wasn't a tragic accident or something that happened in the course of ordinary police work. It's murder, it's racism, it's injustice. And it isn't only injustice, it's inhumanity. When I read that Michael Brown was 18 and that he was shot dead by Darren Wilson, a 28-year-old, 
both young men, but separate, separated by all the ways in which we in this country manifest so deeply a racist death grip over our communities. My heart breaks. This pain necessarily translates to anger and a longing for justice, which for the sake of creating change, I can only translate to action. In her poem, Speech to the Young, Gwendolyn Brooks writes, even if you're not ready for day, it can't always be night. Even when we want to ignore injustice, it calls on us to act. What can we do? We can protest, we can speak out, we can call on President Obama and Attorney General Holder to bring justice to this situation. Most important, we need to work against racism and all its manifestations every day and every moment of our lives. As my friend, Dr. Bernice says, we need to call for a politics of love to achieve justice. We need to bring love to bear on systems predicated on hatred and racism. Gwendolyn Brooks also writes, we're each other's harvest, we are each other's business. We are each other's magnitude and bond. Indeed, we need to be each other's business. We need to focus our shared on our shared humanity, on our shared human bond. We as white folks, those of us who are white here, we must hold ourselves and those around us accountable when our humanity fails. We must work together to bust and shift the systems and the structures that allow, enforce, and perpetrate racism. Racism. We must together, all of us, achieve justice for people of color. We must achieve justice for Michael Brown, for all his brothers and sisters. The lives of brown and black people matter everywhere, everywhere around the world, in Ferguson, Missouri, and here in Northampton, Massachusetts. Yeah.